How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. My name is Dino, but you could just call me Dell. And today, ladies and gentlemen, this is a little bit of a different video. Um, unfortunately, at the time of recording this, I was super sick. <laughs> As you know, I've been sick for probably about the last week and a half now, and I'm just coming off of it. Um, there's no team builder for this video for kind of the same reason. I've just been super, super under the weather. I actually have an autoimmune disease. So when I get sick, um, it's super bad for the most part. So, uh, yeah, but this week we're taking on Q. As you can see on the screen here, uh, we are rocking out with Cleavor, Kilowattrel, Chestnut with a Koba Berry, our boots on our Iron Moth, Banded, Sucker Punch, Chien Pao, or Banded Ice Shard, Chien Pao, correction, and our Choice Scarf, Gardevoir. Q's team is super scary. Um, Sneasler does a lot into me. Spectrier does a lot into me. Mammo's really good. That's Terra Fairy on the uh, Volcanion, which is super, super scary. Espeon, also a really good matchup into us, as uh, I didn't really have um, like a really good special bulk uh, that I could bring this week outside of my Iron Moth or my Gardevoir. So Espeon and Spectre are a little bit of a problem for me. Um, Spec, not as much. Uh, Draining Kiss not okoing things and Chestnut being immune to Shadow Ball makes it okay as like a worst case scenario last ditch effort. Uh, and our Iron Moth also can take a lot of hits from the spec. Um, sub nasty plots are scary, things like that. So we do have to play around that, but um, good luck, have fun to queue. We're gonna be post in this one the entire way through. Uh, we might see a couple cuts here and there just to speed things up, but you never really know. Um, I lead Cleavor here. Now, Cleavor into this guy is awesome. The one scary part for me was I wasn't sure um, like what his set would be. He can take a Stone Axe at full, and then he's absolutely going to kill me back with a Hydro Steam. Um, so I do just chuck out a U-turn, uh, knowing that I, I obviously can't stay in or I run the risk of losing my Cleavor. And Cleavor being Scarfed in this matchup is super nice for me. Just to be able to come in and revenge certain things. Um, you know, like the Sneasler and the and the spec, like barring neither of them were Choice Scarf. Same thing with the Espeon, as long as that's not Choice Scarf, we're in a really good position. But uh, Q elects to Terra here, which is fine with me. Uh, we do see our U-turn damage do actually a good chunk, which is nice. Um, our team's very physically based, so just knowing the damage on this thing early on is really good for me. I do go hard into Gardevoir, kind of expecting the Hydro Steam, uh, because we can trace the Water Absorb. It's a really nice option for me, so I don't have to worry about it too, too much. The one concern now becomes, does this thing have Sludge Wave? Um, sludge Wave in this scenario is not ideal. I don't really have access to any move that's going to super nuke this thing. Psy Shock would have been nice, but as you can see, we do need the coverage for basically everything else on his team. Um, so here I am actually going to, I believe I elect to double. I think I think about this for a good long chunk of time. Um, I just didn't want to run the risk of the sludge wave, so I believe we go hard into um, our Volcarona. Oh no, we Mood Blast the first time. Um... I think the next turn I go Volk, so I apologize there. So we see Flamethrower. Um, I I kind of, I think I overthought here. Um, you know, I checked some damage out. It's not specs, it's nothing like that. Um, but at this point in my head, I really thought that he'd probably fire off like a Sludge Wave or something along those lines. Uh, if he did have it after seeing that the Flamethrower didn't 2 it KO, um, not wanting to really take, you know, a third Moon Blast the turn after. Um, so I do go hard into Volcarona here. Um, Volk also, or not Volcarona, Iron Moth. Iron Moth also covers the Flamethrower pretty well, which is nice. Um, and then it also can bait him into a situation where uh, if he's not Earth Power, we're in a really good spot. We do see Flame Charge though, which is super scary because at this point, um, <laughs> I have no real way of knowing if this thing outspeeds the moth or not depending on how bulky it is like that's really scary um but seeing flame charge means that he doesn't have one of the coverage moves so he either doesn't have sludge wave or he doesn't have earth power um at this point i didn't really want to run the risk of him having the earth power in my head it was more likely that he had that than the uh than the sludge wave um but you know same thing he, he can chuck a hydro steam into the iron moth so it really doesn't matter for him um trace comes out water absorb we trace it again, thank god, and we do actually get some HP back from the steam eruption, which is nice. Um, Gardevoir not being as low <laughs> is super, super key. 
uh, for us actually having a chance in this matchup. At this point, I think I decide that I'm not as afraid of the Sludge Wave, so we do just fire off the Moon Blast here. Really hoping for a special attack drop. Really hoping that killed, in all honesty. Um, doesn't pick up the KO, unfortunately. So at this point, uh, I know I'm faster, which is great. Um, I'm not sure if it's like a speed tie or anything like that. Because we weren't max max speed. Uh, oh, no, we were max speed Gardevoir. Um, we were max speed Gardevoir to speed tie like a Choice Scarf Mamoswine. Swine. Um, so I knew I still outsped at this point. So we just fire off the Moon Blast. And down goes the Volcanion. This is the first week where Volcanion really hasn't done anything for Q, so I'm I'm really happy to, you know, have not um, just completely rolled over to the Volcanion because that's like a really scary Pokemon with Terra. Um, facing Lars with that thing in GBA and now having to play Q uh, pretty, pretty soon after, um, I felt a little bit more prepared for it, but at the same time, can you really prepare for something like that? Um, Q basically calling the fact that we're Choice Scarf at this point because he knows uh, or else Flame Charge um, guy would have, Flame Charge Volcanion would have outsped us. So goes into the Fortress, which is a fair play. Um, at this point, Kilowattril is realistically my only switch in. I'm kind of thinking that he's going to rock or something along those lines. Um, I mean, if he rolls out, then it's hilarious. But like we can take a Gyro Ball too. Uh, I don't really want to give a, like take heavy slam damage if I don't have to. At least we can kind of resist the hit. And going Chestnut doesn't really net us any momentum because Chestnut just brings in something like the Sneasler or something like the Specche. And I just don't really want that. Um, at this point, Hurricane is our best option. Uh, it's going to do the most amount of damage to anything in the back too. Uh, really no reason to not click it. Um, does withdraw the Fortress, which is good play from Q. Of course, Q, pretty very like very very talented battler um so anytime we play q it's always a good 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 matchup uh goes into the mammal mammal at this point really scary um we are terra water so q has two options q can earthquake or q can icicle crash realistically mid ground being knockoff um in my head i'm thinking okay worst case he knocks off i lose my boots but i kill the mammal swine um best case uh, he Icicle crashes into me, uh, and I kill the Mamma Swine, which is awesome. Could be Scarfed on the Mamma at this point. Banded Ice Shard also does a ton to Killo, um, because I, I don't want to risk the extra damage. I do just elect to Terra on this turn. Um, Q takes a hot minute to think about this one. Me and Q both kind of took our time throughout this battle. That's why it is a little bit longer, uh, you know, kind of... Almost arching just just over the 27 mark, almost into the 30 minute game here. So, you know, I I pop Terra here, kill Watchroll. Um, probably one of the more consistent Terra Pokemon that I've used in this generation. Um, I'm definitely not having the same kind of success that Mounte found with it, uh, but uh, I am enjoying it. I think Kill Watchroll is really good. Uh, we do see that Q is scarfed, and he does Earthquake, which is phenomenal. But we do have HP investment in Kilowattril. Thank God. Um, comes up clutch, and we do kill the Mammal Swine, which is big. So down goes Mammo, and at this point, we're in a relatively good position. The problem still being Spectre exists, and um, <laughs> Sneasler still exists. And with Kilo being as low as it is, um, it, it is kind of in a position where I have to play very well to get around things um rocks not being up is nice uh but you know something like the fortress can still come in at this point if it wanted to um sneezler is also a really good revenge option the spec chair is the ideal revenge option so in comes spec and at this point um i'm not really too sure what to do kilo being low i still have guard which is scarfed in the back um, we need to get some damage off onto this guy at this point. Uh, so I believe I elect to stay in just to try to get some chip off on it. I might also make the double into Iron Moth. It's a 50-50 here in my head. So I'm going back and forth. I'm going back and forth. I'm like, oh, but if he subs, like I'm in a really bad spot. Like if he thinks I want to preserve this, that could be really difficult because sub nasty plot kind of just runs through my team at this point. Um, like Chen Pao can come in and do its thing, but like, Draining Kiss is really scary. 
Uh, I've seen double kick on this Pokemon before. So um, really considering all my options here. I know Cleavor can potentially come in to revenge it with the Choice Scarf. So I do decide to stay in as we do see Draining Kiss coming out. Now, at this point, I think I should have... I should have known from the fact that we saw Draining Kiss be the click there instead of Shadow Ball that it was Choice Scarf. Um, because Q, Q knowing that I could have Bulletproof on um, Chestnut makes this kind of the, uh, the more obvious play. Uh, here, I'm really thinking like, okay, can Cleavor come in and pressure this thing out? Like, what are we realistically looking at in terms of damage and stuff? Uh, I know I'm like a faster kilowattrel, but is it, you know, w was it really that much of a difference between uh, the kilo and, and the chin pow that he would speed creep down? Like maybe he wanted to make sure I didn't, you know, run into him, uh, you know, trying to catch me creeping. So uh, I do go into the cleavor. The option to U-turn here was really something I should have considered. Um... And the fact that he scarfed um, into the Draining Kiss meant that Cleavor could take a hit. The problem is I didn't really want to hard call the fact that he was scarfed yet. I think looking back on it, um, giving myself the benefit of the doubt though, because I was very sick. So like full, I I'm not calling Johns, but like, you know, you got to give yourself a little bit of a wiggle room when you're not feeling too well. Um, I do actually elect the Night Slash here, which doesn't do near enough to Fortress. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Fortress is a major problem Pokemon. Uh, even Stone Axe doesn't do a whole lot to it, considering it's still neutral. It is Sharpness boosted and Stab, but it's still not a ton. Uh, the only thing that I can realistically bring into this at this point is Chestnut. Unfortunately, I didn't bring Taunt Spikes. Uh, I did bring three attacks because I was hoping to catch something like an acrobatic Sneasler off guard. Uh, was I a little bit wishful in thinking that I could hard call the fact that Q was gonna bring an acrobatic Sneasler? Maybe. Dire Claw did do, you know, right around the the 55-ish mark to a fully defensive um, chestnut, so uh, it's not needed to, to Oko it at all times. Um, I think the other issue for this game was me not bringing shiny chestnut. I think that was the difference maker, realistically long term. <coughs> Q makes a great double here going into Espeon, expecting me to go into Chestnut. Um, really, really smart play from Q. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, what the hell do I sack? Because um, there's nothing that wants to switch into a Psychic. I could go into the Chin Pal hard, but if he, <laughs> if he chooses the Dazzling Gleam, that's also a problem. Uh, so not wanting to risk going hard Chin Pal. Uh, on an Espeon that, you know, could click a different move. Um, for all intents and purposes, you don't want to overplay in that situation. Um, depending on his set, there was a couple things that I could have lived, but uh, I didn't really want to run the risk. Going to the Gardevoir. Unfortunately, Gardevoir's HP doesn't allow for me to get any kind of scout on what this thing's item is or anything like that. We do... Figure out later in the game that it is, um, I believe, I believe Q ended up bringing Specs against me, which does make a lot of sense. Um, all things considering, Specs is really, really nice into me, just for the breaking power mainly. Um, you don't have to worry about damage rolls and stuff, uh, when you are Specs on Espeon. Oh no, it was Sashed Espeon, sorry, it was Sashed, but, um, still a major damage dealer. And uh, as you can see, he did click Dazzling Gleam. So, um, he, pressure was on. Uh, he was willing to make the call anyways. Gleam did still kill the guard from that point. So now we're really trying to figure out, okay, how do I get some damage on the Espeon? How do we, you know, navigate the fact that it could be Choice Scarf on the spec in the back? Um, we still don't know the item on Sneasler. How do I figure that out? Uh, Stone Axe comes out. It does a good chunk of damage here to the fortress and spikes go up now these this turn specifically coming up it might not be this one but it might be the one after that um there are a couple things that could have changed the end game of how this played out because rocks being up very key in keeping sash off the espion rocks being up in chip on things like spectre air 
um, we do see rapid spin come out of Fortress. Now, take into account the fact that that does boost Fortress's speed. Fortress now at plus one speed does not kill me with Gyro Ball. At that HP, it is a roll to kill, but it me clicking Stone Axe forces him to rapid spin a second time or trade me his Fortress for damage on Cleavor. Q in this situation actually ends up clicking Gyro Ball, I believe. And because of the speed boost, Gyro Ball doesn't kill my Cleavor, which is super unfortunate because we missed the Stone Axe here. And now because of that, <laughs> um, Fortress is now out of range of Stone Axe for sure because of the leftovers. Q also has Protect, which lets him get even more HP back. Uh, and at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I, th this sucks. This is really less than ideal. I need to kind of, you know, force some momentum. I'm hard thinking going into Iron Moth here because I think he's going to want a rapid spin or he's going to fire off another Gyro Ball. And yes, Gyro Ball does additional damage, but at least I resist it. And then I can fire off something like a Fiery Dance. That'll put some pressure on him um, considering the Volcanion is no longer there. And the Volcanion was realistically the only thing that could safely switch in to Iron Moth this entire game. Um, it was AV with, you know, a little bit of HP in there so that it could reliably make the pivot in any time it needed to. Um, so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, nothing really wants to switch into this. Fire Dance is super free. Uh, Q has to sack something to me. But like I said, having those rocks up, as you'll see in the end game, could have made a little bit of a difference in terms of how it went. It's not a guarantee, like I said. Things happen all the time. You miss moves. That's Pokemon at the end of the day. Um, that's the reason why there's no rock move with 100% accuracy. Like over with a damage higher than I think it's Smackdown has the highest highest damage for all rock moves at 50 that don't miss. So, you know, it is what it is. We don't want to dwell on it for too long. Um, moon in now, right now. Uh, moon in now, right now. Goodness, Delray. See, postcom not really my thing, but we're we're getting through it here just for you guys, because um, I didn't want this to go without some kind of uh, context to the battle. Obviously, I couldn't live comment because I was super super sick, um, and it just sounded like crap, man. At, at one point, I started rapping Godzilla. Maybe that'll be an outtake at the end of the video just for you guys. Um, it's like a fun little outro, but. Uh, yeah, this was not this was not an ideal situation to be in. Q unfortunately now has to come up with the idea of okay, is this thing specs? And if so, what am I sacking? Because if I was choice specs in this situation, uh, there is a lot of things that this guy could have done. So we do get over fifty percent here from the Iron Moth, and we get the special attack boost. Now. At this moment, I am met with the decision of, okay, does he have Rock Slide? In my head, I don't think he does, because obviously I'm hard calling the fact that he has Acrobatics for my Chestnut. Um, in terms of what I can go into safely, I could sack the Cleavor. That is an option, but I, it's scarfed, so I'm like, okay, maybe I, maybe I need to keep the Cleavor around. Uh, this is an option for the Spectre. Hindsight, probably should have kept the Moth around. Because um, it forces Spectre to either lock into something like Draining, to, to, to lock into something like Shadow Ball or, or Psychic, as opposed to being able to just click Draining Kiss. I end up sacking my Iron Moth. That's probably the biggest misplay from me there. That's probably what cost me the game in reality. Um, so a big, 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 big misplay on my behalf, which is unfortunate. Um, nothing you can realistically... Uh, make an excuse for on it. Like, it, it's it's the incorrect play in that situation. Um, here, I go into Chestnut. I know Chestnut can take any hit, especially because I'm Cobra Berry. Uh, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, maybe he tries to acro, uh, something along those lines. Could fire off a U-turn, yada, yada, yada. Maybe my better play was to knock off. Oh, but if I knock off, then he gets the Unburden boost. Like, do I really want that? Um, so it's a tricky little spot to be in. I want to fire off the Earthquake at least and get the kill onto the Sneasler. Um, that was the whole point of it was to kind of bait it and then fire off the EQ into it. So, um, we do end up locking that in. Q once again kind of making the decision of, okay, do I need, do I go into the Fortress? Is it worth getting the damage on the Chestnut? Like, 
what can realistically happen here. Like if he's a belly drum set, am I screwed? Um, he still outspeeds no matter what with the spec in the back. Um, in my head, I probably should have knocked, but that is, you know, it is what it is. And once again, this thing gets to come out, which is really frustrating because uh, I, I should have should have been in a position where I could have KO'd it uh, a couple of different times, and I just didn't make the correct play at the time, which happens. I mean, you know, you, you can play these games and go over them in, in post a lot and, and really think about what, what you could have done better. And I think that's something that I've been getting better at is really thinking about how I could have improved upon the last game and, and what I could have done better to... to you know, win certain situations. Um, he does spin again, kind of, I think he called me, you know, clicking something like spikes there. I do fire off knockoff though. Knockoff on chestnut is such a great move. Um, just being able to, to constantly pressure things that, uh, you know, are slower and bulkier walls that can't break through me. It's really nice. Um, Q has to fire off the Q here because gyro ball is blocked by bulletproof, at least I believe. When I was prepping, that was a big reason. We're gonna live check it right now. Um, you might see a little cut to a picture on your screen of everything that Bulletproof blocks. Uh, yeah, it does block Gyro Ball. So um, he, he can't click that into me, which is great. I am forced to kind of just drain punch away. If I had spikes, it would have been nice. If I had, uh, you know, taunt or something like that, that could have been nice. But Q didn't have, um, Q didn't have any hazards of his own on this fortress, which thank God for me, um, because I could have been really, really in trouble with some spike stack this week. Uh, we do end up killing the fortress, which is nice. I could have fired off a drain punch there, but I didn't want to give him the, the free switch in to something like Espeon uh, if he wanted to keep fortress as a sack, which I think he could have done, or, or something like Spectre, especially after seeing me fire off drain punches. Um, I definitely think Q could have could have tried to be aggressive there he didn't really need to though um and it actually pays off for him in the long run not giving hp on uh either of those pokemon so q at this point left with three i'm also left with three this is a really tight battle I i'm really proud of how i played all things considering um like i said with with being uh in a position where you know you have to play someone um either equal or above your skill level and not feeling 100%. It can be really, really uh, a mental game more than anything else while you're playing because you know your prep is good, but it's trying to stay in the game the whole time that you really have to focus on. And, and in this situation here, I'm thinking, okay, maybe Chess not gonna take a hit. Do I sack the Cleavor off? I still don't know the item. It's like, maybe I can revenge with Cleavor after the fact, like that would be super nice. Uh, I might be able to set up for a Chin Pao, like sweep with Icicle Shard, or Ice Shard at the end. Uh, it all just depends on, on everything. So like Chestnut faints, and here I'm like, okay, you know, we, we have to get into a situation where I can I can revenge. I gotta go Cleavor. So Cleavor gets to come in here. Realistically speaking, what I should have done in this situation is probably click Stone Axe. Um, the U-turn is fine. But I didn't know the item on the Sneasler yet. So if I had Stone Axed here, um, I could have got Rocks up. I could have just hard locked Ice Shard, and I also could have won the game. At least I think. Damage rolls be damned and everything like that, of course. Um, U turning here is also not a bad thing. Because like I said, depending on the Sneasler set, uh, there's there's a lot of stuff that can happen. Q actually ended up having some HP and a little bit of defense investment in his Sneasler. So it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world for me to click U-turn here. Um, I also didn't know if it was Sashed Espeon. So if it was Sashed and uh, and he clicked Dazzling Gleam there into my Cleavor as I U-turned on him, like I would have brought him all the way down. But then I would have had to sack Chin Pao in the back, and then I would have just straight lost. So, um, you know, these are the things where I, I probably, I in, in hindsight, I think I click Stone Axe there, and then I think I click Stone Axe again, and then I think I just go hard into uh, Chin Pao after the fact and and try to clean up with Ice Shard. Um, once again, I didn't know the item on the Sneasler at this point. You can say that I should have, you know, uh, maybe I should have just just hard throat chopped and 
and tried to tried to be in a position, you know, call call the fact that this thing isn't scarfed. Um, throat chop would have been close. I think it killed from this range because we were, um, you know, we we were Chen Pao <laughs> and we were banded, so there there was a high chance throat chop could have killed. Um, but at the same time. I still don't know the item on the stuff in the back and without having Sucker Punch and the option of him potentially clicking Sword Stance and things like that, you really can't just lock into stuff. So uh, we do fire off the Ice Shard and then Espeon is going to come out now, I believe. And um, I think Espeon, you know, uh, if I'd had rocks, if I'd had rocks in this situation, um, like if I'd clicked the Stone Axe on the uh if i clicked the stone x on the u-turn turn instead of instead of u-turning out against the espion i would have been in a much better position um granted you can miss it like we did earlier in the game uh, it, it might not have picked up the ko on the sneezler in the back still didn't know the set on the sneezler in the back so you know a lot of stuff can can go wrong with it um meister comes out this Espeon put in a ton of work for Q. I gotta give him a lot of respect. He he played this very well and kept kept the uh, hazards off the field basically the entire game, which was really good. Ice shard comes out. We do get a good chunk of damage after rocks. It still still doesn't kill, but Gleam also doesn't kill us. Um, maybe if the earlier rocks were up with this Espeon coming in twice, we might have had a chance on it, but still, it, it's very, very much splitting hairs. Um, still don't know the <laughs> the item on the Spectre in the back. Should have assumed Scarfed, of course. Uh, if I had Sucker Punch at this point, obviously I'm hard switching out uh, into the Cleavor, and we're, we're going to try to win the game that way. But I don't, and I'm hoping that he chooses substitute, thinking that I'm not choice banned for some reason. But he doesn't. Q makes the correct play. He draining kisses here, and uh, that basically seals it. Um, it was a really good game to Q. Uh, I'm not going to hang my head at all. Losing 1-0 um, to a person whose matchup into me I think was probably the best yet um, is nothing to hang my head at. And, you know, bouncing back off of... Uh, off sickness is always something hard to do when you in anything in life whether you're going to work whether you're going to school showing up and and doing something and giving your best effort when you're not feeling 100 percent is not something uh a lot of people like doing or, or want to do to begin with so uh ggs again to q really fun game um he gets his revenge on me for gba so you know i got jay but q got me there we go we traded traded everything goes back to even there uh ggs to q once again and yeah that's gonna be it for me guys thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye bye heck i know all these fans perspire like a liar's paying someone fire and i got no plans to retire and i'm still the man you admire these chicks is passing out i only get more hands from fly i got them passing out like what you do when you hand someone fires and what goes around comes around just like the planes on a chainsaw Flex my dollar stack right off the bat like a baseball. Like kidding, bitch, I got them racks with so much cheese that they call me Diddy. Cause I make bands and I call getting cheese a cakewalk. Bitch, I'm a player. I'm too motherfucking city for share. Won't even lend you an ear. Name ain't pretending to care. But I tell a bitch I'm Mary if she'll bury her face in my genital area. The original voice of Richard Rosarius, Chris from Rivera's. Cause my lyrics never sit well, so they wanna give me the chair. And like a paraplegic in this hairy, call it Harry Carey. Cause every time I'm dicking. Motherfucking dictionary. <clears throat> Obituary column, we wouldn't see eye to eye staring problem. Kid is actually staring column. Trigger happy, packy, but black evil happy. Bad meets to the right, big maxi to big mac meets with a maxi single look. My rap sheet would attract these people as my gangster bitch, the patchy with a hatchy drink, relaxed, like a half eaten cheeto.